Okay, this video will show how to use Aspire Server Administration. If you know the URL from your browser to get direct to the Aspire Server Administrator, you can use that or you can go inside Aspire and go Tools, Server Administration, log in with your username and password. And you will be brought to the server administration. Okay, the first item on the list is companies. This is where your company would be listed. You can click on a company to work on it, or you can add a new company. And from here, we can create a company. So we'll just do a create a new company. Database name has to go in first with no spaces or special characters. Set your fiscal year end country and create. And we'll go through the steps of creating an empty database for that new company. Once complete, it will show up on the list. You can also restore a company. So if you hit the restore button, select a file to restore from. Give it the database name and click restore. Once restored, that company will appear on the list as well. From here, you can go to the settings of that company. You can set the snapshot intervals, or a snapshot date, a next snapshot date, the intervals, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, and how many snapshots to keep. You can also set a default logo for the company. For This will appear on all your forms. Just select that from your browser and then save that. And that'll appear on all your forms that are printed from sales and from purchase orders. If a new version has just been installed and the database has changed, the company will appear on this list italicized. And then to update it, you can just click the upgrade button and it will upgrade it to the newest format. If you wanted to create a snapshot immediately, that can be done by clicking on Create Snapshot, and it backs it up, and it is saved into the server in the Snapshots folder. You can also import data from Sage Business Vision. All you need to do is click on the Download, and it will inst install a program that will do the business vision import. It takes a few seconds to download. It will run. Once installed, it launches the business vision import. Note that that error message that came up means that pervasive is not installed on this computer. This must be done on a computer that has both the Spire database and the Business Vision data and the Pervasive database. Next, we will look at the Accounts folder. This is where all your users that have access to Spire are. You can add a new user here, or you can do it inside Spire itself. And from here, you can decide if this user is an administrator as well. Administrator means that they get access to this administration tool. Okay, to set which companies a user is allowed to access, just simply click on the user, the account, and go show company access. And you can turn on each company that that person is allowed to use. Okay, from this screen, you can also toggle if they have access. So you can select multiple users and then click on toggle. So if I can turn, let's say Mary, I can toggle Mary on and off as to whether they have access uh, to the uh, system at all. So this is a this is current active users. So this would be the number of, if you have a license for five users or 10 users, you're, you're able to activate 10 of those users under your license. So we'll just turn Mary back on. And you can, like I said, toggle several of them at the same time. So from here, you can also delete a user. You can update a user. So if you're updating their name, 
or their email address. You can do that from here and also their, whether they get admin access or not. You can also tick the active tag from that point. Okay, next we'll go to snapshots. This is where the snapshots or backups are created. They're not a backup, of course, until they're taken off premises off the server. But from here you can access them. So if you just click on one of the previous backups, we have one here. It downloads it to your local workstation that you're logged in from because I'm logged in on a workstation to the Spire administrator. So I can download to that my local workstation. I can also delete snapshots from here. And then this snapshot, of course, is the Spire snapshot. This contains all the user information from inside the administrator. So when you're doing a restore on a new server, you would restore your most current snapshot plus the Spire users uh, uh, back up here. Under reports, from a workstation or server, you can access the reports. So these are all the reports here. They all are, in this case, are all our stock reports. What we can do, if you've got a report you'd like to disable, you don't want it to show up in your system at all. So say that AR payment, I can click on the status and I can uh, toggle it to being uh, disabled, which is italicized on the list like that. And at any time I want to reestablish it, I can turn it back on again. But this is helpful where it's a report that you just never would use or don't want to be able to turn off individually for a user. This is also where you can upload a custom report. So if I click the upload button and select file to upload, I can choose one of my RPT files that I've customized and you can decide which company it belongs to. So I can choose a company. If I don't choose a company, it'll be available for all companies. And I just click the upload button and that new report will get uploaded. So if we refresh our screen, we should go down the list and see there's that new report we just uploaded that shows which company it's been uploaded for. You can also click that report and remove it. So if you want to delete it, you can delete it from here as well and disable it as well. To do customizations to reports, you can simply download it. It gets downloaded to your local workstation. You can then open that up in Crystal Reports, make your modifications, and then just upload the file back to the server again. Very simple to do from any workstation. Not The server access is not required. Okay, next is where our integrations happen. At this point, this is the pay firma integration for payment processing is here. And there's, uh, there's separate instructions on how to connect that. Okay, so if we click on license, this shows that this particular license is a trial license. If you have now purchased it, you can hit the refresh button. And we now see that it's licensed for 20 users, service manager, production manager, and payroll. And the annual updates are included all the way through till November of 2020. If you purchase additional licenses, say down the road, you've uh, wanted to add some more users, then you contact your partner. And once they've made the purchase, you again click refresh. And now you've got an extra 10 users added there. Okay, the next thing we look at is the logs. And under logs, you can look at the Spire server log and the Postgres logs. These are something that may be asked for you by support. Uh, and if you need to download them so they can be uploaded to support, you just click on the log, hit download. It downloads the log, which you can then upload to support. And sometimes the database log as well may be required. And that can be downloaded as well and uploaded. By clicking on the user icon in the top right, see who's logged in as. Click on the change password button if you want to, or the logout, and you'll be taken out of the Spire admin program. And that's it.